Omar al Shogri from Syria. Welcome to College Freedom Forum at Universidad Francisco Marroquín in Guatemala. We're very happy and honored to have you. It brings me a lot of joy to be here. What led you to become an activist in human rights and speaking out about the situation in Syria? How did that begin? When I was little young, you know, I, I, I didn't have anything major to live for. You know, I fell in love with a little girl. I loved that moment. I had a challenging father. He wanted us to study all the time. And then I had a regular life, you know, nothing major, nothing different, nothing unique until I turned 15 years old. And I was called by my cousin to join the first protest on the street. That was the most beautiful moment I ever seen. Thousands of people on the street asking for freedom, freedom jumping with happiness, you know. You can feel the joy of their, uh, of their time on the street. And on the other side, you had the, the soldiers aiming the guns on them. Poof, poof. And people start to die. My friends were dying next to me. The blood was everywhere. And I realized that the government in Syria, the regime in Syria, is nothing but monsters and criminals that we need to stand against them. So I started to go to the street every time I had the chance to, to ask for freedom, to ask to change this corrupt regime. And for that, I was taken to prison once, twice, three times, seven times. My last time in prison spent three years, three years of torture, starvation, three years of seeing my beloved ones die next to me my best friends dying next to me and having a new best friend and dying next to me, a new best friend and dying next to me for three years all the time. Living what I lived through, I could not come out of prison and just be normal, right? I have to dedicate at least a part of my life to work on this. Part of my life, I understand the suffering of these political prisoners. Some of them never even get engaged in politics because they were arrested by the intelligence services. I understand the pain they're going through on a daily basis. How could I sit in a safe home somewhere else where I have resources and I have the power to change what they are going through and sit and do nothing? I would not accept that. Morally, I cannot sit and not engage, try to help these people survive. So I am not an activist. I won't define myself an activist. I'm just a person who experienced what these innocent people are going through, and I want to help. Not everybody who's trying to help should be defined an activist, right? I'm just a student. I'm a young man trying to enjoy my life, to have as much fun as I can, go to parties sometimes, come to universities sometimes, have coffee with, with friends, but at the, all at the same time, I do work to help these people who are suffering because that's my you know, human responsibility. What do you believe are the most effective strategies for promoting human rights and holding governments accountable for abuses, particularly in the context of authoritarian regimes? Everything I went through is a story. So the most, most, the most effective way to bring awareness to the world is to tell this story. However, this story is painful. This story of death, of torture, of starvation, and when you share a story of pain to people, extreme pain, their brain blocks it away because they don't want to feel guilty about not doing anything about it. So that's why when you share a story of pain, it needs to be combi combined with the story of hope. So pain should always lead to hope in case you want to inspire people to take actions. So when I go to the stage and when I share my story with you, you see me smiling. This has a very important, it, everybody in the audience thinks, why is this guy smiling? He's talking about the death of his beloved ones, right? So the question is, if I go and make you cry, because I can easily make you cry by telling you brutal stories of my time in prison, how my cousin, who I loved so much, who I first had built the first greenhouse with, the, the person who I had the first hamburger with, and the person who I tamed the bird with, my best friend died in my arms while I was walking to him, and I thought he was asleep. We fall to the ground and hit him on the face. Hey, Bashir, wake up. We have to go. And he was dead. You know, I can't tell you brutal stories that make you cry, but also I know that you cannot absorb that information because it could be a little bit too far from your reality today. So instead, I tell you about the stories of hope, how I actually, despite everything I went through, this experience gave me everything I have today. Because I was in prison, I am alive today. Because outside, what they did is they did a massacre and killed my family. If I was outside, I would have died. 
And if I wasn't in prison, I would have never had the disease I got, tuberculosis, that made me very skinny, very small, that helped in the process of smuggling me out of prison. If I wasn't in prison, I would have died, but also I would never have had the disease that forced me to go to Sweden to get medical treatment. And in Sweden, in the hospital, I met a friend, a person I never met, we became friends. Then he was from Sweden, and he introduced me to live with his family. I lived with his family, I learned Swedish, then I started to go to Norway, deliver speeches. I went to Norway and, and learned Norwegian, then I started coming to the United States. I learned English, and now I have the chance of being in Guatemala and meeting you, and having this interview, and sharing this story with thousands of people around the world is all because I went through what I went through. These terrible experience in my life is the only reason I have a purpose. I have something meaningful I'm doing today. I can't imagine, I can't imagine going back in time and not being part of a revolution because that was the most meaningful thing I ever done despite the fact that I lost my father lost my brothers, the younger and the older. I lost my cousins, I lost my school, I lost time, you know. Despite all of that, I would never regret going out to the street because this was the most meaningful thing. Even for, the, for saving the lives of one innocent person, it was necessary. It gave me meaning in life. And there is something, something that brings you joy in your life is purpose and meaning. So we all see the stories coming out of Syria that are terrible, and it seems like their regime is gaining strength. Yet your message is of hope and change. How do you see the future of Syria? Do you see there are more people like you with this courage, with this hope that things will change despite what they're living through right now? People have a very strong spirit. People are very um, empowered by the fact that they are doing something right. Not everybody, however, has the opportunity to be sitting here like me today. Not everybody has worked on their talent of public speaking or presentations or so on. This is my responsibility to be here speaking to you because I have this talent of public speaking that I enjoy. So this is a very sustainable way of working on the Syrian revolution is each person do what they are good at doing. So I love public speaking. So I help Syria by doing public speaking and doing interviews. Someone else loves writing. So they write articles about it or books. Someone else loves making movies. They record, they, have, they put their cameras, they write their script, they do research. Someone else loves doing, is a doctor, can help people on the ground. When everybody doing the function that they enjoy doing it, they can do it for one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years without getting tired because they have fun. I can sit with you in this interview for five days. Without, without getting tired or bored because I love what I'm doing. That's the problem that people are facing. People are doing things they don't enjoy doing. Some people don't enjoy going to the street, but they force themselves to go to the street. Some people don't have money, but they feel guilty, so they donate. Some people don't like writing, but they have to bring awareness, so they write. That's not good because this is not sustainable. And a question of war, it's a very long-term problem. So in order for you to address a very long-term problem that's not cannot be solved within weeks, you have to do something that you can keep doing on a long, long time. And if you're doing something you hate doing, you can't do it for a long time. You're going to get depressed. When you get depressed yourself, what's going to happen? You're not going to inspire other people to take actions. So when I sit here today and people see how much I love doing what I'm doing, they're going to be inspired themselves to do something they care about. And every individual regardless of age, gender, or background, or anything, have the power to do something amazing. So let's finish with a message of hope to people that are listening to you. It can either be of Syria or in the country you live now or to the future. What are those words of wisdom, of hope, that call to action that you want to send to the world? I am definitely not smarter than anyone listening to me, not anyone watching at this moment. Um, so what I share is, is only personal experience, could apply to some and not to all. Um, we always, or I always, seek to have a good life, an easy life, a lovely life. Uh, we want all problems be, to be solved and have easy, beautiful moments. However, if I choose to only have the beautiful moments in my life, 
then I will be myself less than half of myself because most of life is not easy things. Most of life is not beautiful moments. Most of life is painful moments, stressful moments, challenging moments, hardships. That's what we go through to be who we are today. So I encourage everyone based on personal experience to not seek an easy life, rather seek a meaningful life. A meaningful life can have a lot of hardships. And again, if you go back to your life, if you have the power to go back in time and relive the days you lived before, don't even wish to change anything about them, including the challenging things, because those challenging things are the most important part of your identity and who you are today. So if you want to become something or become someone you will be proud to present to the world, you have to embrace hardships. You have, most importantly, to embrace pain as much as you embrace joy. Thank you, Omar al shogri Welcome to College Freedom Forum. We are honored to have you. The honor is all mine. <laughs>